Heart of Nation, of course, is about what makes Israel so innovative. And um, I think what you've seen here uh, pretty much answers the question. Um, I mean, what you've seen, I've been sitting here, you know, been in and out the past, just the past hour, and to see, you know, four or five presentations in that time uh, that knock your socks off and incredibly creative, incredibly uh, innovative, what you're seeing is creative energy in action. And uh, the amazing thing about Israel and that we write about in the book is um, that what Israel has done is taken, uh, sort of created a renewable source of creative energy and funneled that energy into startups, into social entrepreneurship, into the arts, into culture. In a way, Startup Nation was about one part of that funnel, the funnel into startups mainly. And there really are uh, you know, other books to be written about what's happening with the same creative energy in social entrepreneurship, in arts and culture, and this is what you're seeing. Um, and so I, I only have a few minutes, and I'm not going to really go through the book. What I want to do is say something uh, that connects to the internet, to the real-time web, uh, that connects to the future of Startup Nation. And that is that, I mean, the ecosystem that we have here now uh, is largely, you know, the big companies, the uh, Google, Microsoft, IBM, whatever, mm -hmm. Cisco, here, coming here, uh, buying companies, building R&D centers, essentially trying to bridge the gap between startups and big companies, where big companies uh, are great at scaling up, They're, they have trouble with innovation, startups are great at innovation, they have no idea how to scale up, and it's a kind of marriage made in heaven uh, uh, that you're seeing going on here, and that's the lion's share of the ecosystem. But what I'm excited about is actually something new that has not, has not really started here. That is, I think, the potential for a whole new ecosystem that is largely based on the possibilities that come from the web. And that is that I've been going around the, the world, pretty much literally, <laughs> talking about the book. Uh, as it comes out in different languages, I've been to Korea, to China, to India, to Brazil. It's out or coming out in about 15 languages. 15? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, there was, I got an e my first email ever from Mongolia saying they wanted, <laughs> there's a school there that wants to translate the book. Uh, it, it's, and, and first of all, it's fascinating as a sort of Rorschach test for the world and innovation because you, what I noticed is that the, the countries that are most excited about the book and that translated first are, are the emerging markets. And only later did we get German and French and Italian and, and, and you know, for instance, we got Chinese and Korean. It's very, going very well there. And only much later do we get Japanese, because the Japanese are more like Europeans, they're more, uh, more advanced uh, uh, economically, they're less hungry. And so what I've been seeing is that there are startups coming up in these countries, in these developing countries, in these emerging markets. And what's exciting to me is the possibility of Israel essentially becoming the Silicon Valley for the rest of the world, meaning Israelis go to Silicon Valley, you know, people from all over go to Silicon Valley to do startups. But when you do that, it's mostly about the American market. Even though we've, we've heard, and it's true, that, that, that everything has to be global, you, you got to start somewhere. And, and Silicon Valley, by its nature, is very America-centric in terms of the way it thinks uh, of how you do the world. Uh, you do it through America. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the world out there the emerging markets are larger than the American market collectively. They're growing faster. And there's a whole new, it's a whole new animal. You have a country like India where they're adding 15 million cell, cell phone subscribers a month. That's like two Israels a month um, of cell phones. And a lot of these people don't have electricity, don't have bank accounts, don't have credit cards. They're leapfrogging whole levels of technology. You know, they, they don't obviously have a fixed line phone. Um, and who's doing startups for this world? I mean, 
And I think the way to do it, and when I've been, say, when I was in India, and they got this before I even said it, that the way to do it is together with a, a country like Israel. Because we, we know how to do startups. And we're also plugged into the international tech ecosystem. But we know nothing about India. And the only way we can, the only way startups can be done for a place like this is, is together. Together with the people who have kind of the, the more experience and access, and, and the people who know the, the place, the culture, the very strange animal that is a, a, a country that's growing quickly uh, and leapfrogging in whole technologies. So um, I have this, this vision of, of startups from these countries coming to Israel, you know, being saturated by being in a startup friendly environment, which I don't think, I think it's very important to understand how important that is. I mean, even people from Europe, you know, you think, why can't you do a startup in Europe? But a lot of, and I keep, I've been hearing this over the past couple of days, uh, from Europeans saying, you know, they, they always seem to often have to feel like they have to go to Silicon Valley, they have to go somewhere else. Why? Because it's very hard to be in an entrepreneur in an entrepreneurship uh, hostile environment, in a place where it's not considered a normal thing to do, where it's, uh, 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 where, you know, taking risks and, and being inventive is not normal, uh, or, or just, just, it's just not a normal career path. It may be normal, but, but to do it as a startup and not in a big company is not normal. And so to be in a place where it's accepted, where it's, everybody loves it, and, and to just breathe the air is a big help. And pe that's a big reason, actually, why people go to Silicon Valley. It's not so much, not just for the American market, it's simply to be in an environment where you can do startups. Uh, and Israel is very much one of those environments, but where Silicon Valley is always going to be kind of about doing things first for America, if you come from India or Korea or Brazil to here, it's not going to be about Israel. There's nothing, there's no market here uh, to, to, be, to be aiming for. It's going to be back about India or wherever you're from. Um, so I'm excited about this possibility, and this, this, is, uh, this is very much a function the reason why there are these startup sectors coming up in these places is very much a function of, of the web. What you're seeing is that all kinds of components of creating startups have become commodities, particularly the cloud. You know, you, can, you don't need huge server farms and so on to, to do startups these days. You just get it from Amazon, you get it from somewhere else. Uh, this has been a new possibility. This is a new possibility. It's making... Um, it's easier, making things easier to do startups from Israel, but it's also making things easier for everybody else around the world. And what you're seeing, I think, is kind of startup sectors coming up in these different countries and ready to burst out. And this, again, is a one-time change in history. It's not just that, that these countries are going through uh, uh, a phase of leapfrogging technologies, but also there's going to be startup sectors, not just in Israel and Silicon Valley, but in all these other places. In a few years, you're going to see these kind of sectors everywhere. Uh, and this, I think, is, is a great opportunity for Israel. Um, uh, it, it's a great opportunity for, for, for entrepreneurship, for changing the world. And it's, it's very much a function of, uh, of the web and our new world. So. Um, uh, I'll leave it at that, and thank you, Jeff, and thanks very much uh, for exposing uh, all of us to all this great event.